Hey guys, welcome back to another Winter Landscape Acrylic Painting Lesson. I'm Mike Ferris. In this video, I'm going to get started on this 8x10 hardboard canvas with my image already laid out with wax transfer paper. And on my palette, I'm going to get started here with some raw umber, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and some titanium white. So I want this very light sky up here. Um, not very much at all. It's mostly a white overcast sky. So I'm going to take a hint of blue into it. So I'm going to take quite a bit of white. And this is my number 10 flat brush. And with just the tip on the edge like that, just the corner on one corner. And then the other one, I'm going to dip in to the raw umber. And that's just to desaturate the blue just a little bit. And I'm going to mix this into my white. And this is going to give me a very faint but blue sort of hue to the sky. So a little bit more blue into that. And this is going to be more for the top. And as I get down towards the horizon where the tree line is, it's going to be mostly titanium white. So I'm just going to go like so. And then, like I said, white right here. And I'll just fade this up. And this is pretty much all I'm going to do for our sky. Okay, so now with my palette knife, I'm going to take some phthalo blue and some raw umber in equal parts. So when you mix these two, essentially you get black. And I wanted this instead of permanent black because it gives a nice blue hue when you add white to it. And that's perfect for this winter scene here. So now I have my number four flat brush. I'm just loading it up there. And I want to start with the trunk of the pine tree here. So based on the image, I'll bring it in to about where it's supposed to be. And with one corner of the brush, you can see I'm just tapping very lightly. And I don't want to go too hard because at the top, of course, they are smaller foliage pieces. So now I'm going to turn the brush over. And of course, you want to have fresh paint and you don't want it super dry because it doesn't look as good with foliage when things get fuzzy and when they don't have those nice clean lines. So something like this, I'm going to go a little bit heavier, as I said, with the brush as I tap. And now when I get down at the bottom, I can sort of forget about the corners and just use the full on brush and really tap it in as I bring it down like this and it'll give me a nice realistic pine tree. Okay, going back into some more of that black there with my number four flat again and one more time doing another trunk and in the same way bringing this pine down and notice how I'm leaving some gap like this. This really helps to show obviously different trees and really gives depth and dimension when you have some trees that are behind others and then of course other ones that are closer to us. So with this one I'm not going to draw the trunk first. I'm just going to tap it down like this and there'll be some different shapes and some of them will be you know have some openings and so like this one right here I thought I'd do something different. I would come down again very light pressure as I tap and then I kind of wanted to take these branches or this foliage out just a little bit further like this and you can do these however you want there's really no right or wrong just kind of use variety and this really makes it more realistic and gives more variety and interest this way So now using the edge of the flat brush, I'm going to hash in these distant trees. And so see, I'm going to wiggle the brush through as I load it on both sides and then pull through on both sides. And then see, that gives me a nice crisp edge like this. And with that nice edge, I'm going to go and strike in these distant trees and we'll just fill in this tree line like so. Okay, and with the corner of the brush again, I'm going to make these tiny little foliage indications on these distant pines. And of course, I don't want to make them the same size as the trees in front or I'll lose that distance on this.
And right here, there's another one that's going off the canvas here that's right next to that one. And just gonna work that down right next to that tree like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in again into that black and I want to fill in this little area right here. This is gonna be a bush with obviously a bunch of sticks and twigs on it. So now I'm gonna take some white into this color and I'm gonna let those trees dry before I come back and put snow on them so they don't mix in with the black that I just put down. So with this light blue hue color here, let's just fill in the entire snow banks with this. And of course I won't fill in the river part, but this is just gonna be a base coat for now. Okay, going back into that black with raw umber and phthalo blue once again, and this is my number 12 flat brush. And with this value, I'm gonna start blocking in all of the river areas. Okay, adding a little bit more river there. So now with my number four flat brush and taking some titanium white with just a hint of that blue hue into it. And I wanna start adding the snow here on the trees. Again, same method as when I made the trees. So here and there, but not everywhere. And allowing some of those dark areas to show through, which again shows the details of where the foliage is. So wherever you decide to put these is where this is going to show the details. And of course, as I get down here, I can get a little bit thicker and that really shows the realism of the pine this way. So this is a really good way to practice these trees and a really good lesson on this painting to really practice this stuff. If you don't like something, just take that dark and cover it over any snow that gets out of whack or erase it to any degree that you want. So really just go for it and have fun with this and flock those trees away. Okay, and again on these distant trees, I don't want to make these snow flockings. Is that even a thing? Snow flockings? <laughs> I don't know. But you don't want to make them as big again because they're distant. And if I make them the same size, of course, that will lose the distance. So just teeny bit of pressure, just barely touching it here and there and placing these where I want them to be. Okay, with lots of water on the script liner, you can see it dripping off like so. Very important to have enough water on a script liner. So with some of that black and white, I'm gonna pull it as I turn it into a nice tip. And just with the tip of it, I'm gonna scratch in some little twigs like this in this dark area. So now I have my number four fan brush here. I'm gonna use this to make some of this foliage on those sticks that I just did. So the bristles are nice together, but I wanna get them spread apart. So I'm gonna take my water 
I'm going to dip this into it. And when I do that, you notice all the different little tips there on it. And that's exactly what I want to do is use those tips to create this foliage on those sticks that I just made. So I'm going to take just the tips and dip them into this raw umber and this thalo blue for that dark value. And now I'm going to go into some white to lighten that up. And again, I just want the tips. If I pull it through the paint, it's going to bring all the bristles back together as one brush. And again, I don't want to do that. I want these individual tips like this. So with these fan brushes like this, it's super awesome because you can just tap like this. And notice when I rotate the brush, I'm not rotating it with the bristles against the canvas because if I do that, it's going to smear and make mud. And I'm going to lose the crisp effect of this foliage on this. So just going to turn it while it's in the air. And as I come down, tap it and pull it off right away. So now I'm getting all these little things like this. And this is an excellent method if you wanna make these wintertime foliage bushes like this. Okay, so now I'm going into that dark value with no white this time, and again, just the tips. And I'm going to do that here and there, and I'm gonna let some of those lights play in that I just did. And I can also place that right here as well or anywhere. And again, if you don't like something, take that light color and you can cover it right back up. Okay, going back to my script liner brush. And again, lots of water with some of that black and white pulling through to a point. And with the tip, I'm going to strike just a few places and give some highlights like this. Okay, back to my number four flat brush. And I'm going to go back into that dark value of the phthalo blue and raw umber. And I just want to kind of do some of these very distant little potholes in the snow here that shows some of the river in the distance flowing through. Okay, going back into some more of that white with that black, and again, see this blue hue here? And if I take some raw umber, I can desaturate it down a little bit so it's not so vibrant. Okay, and right here, I wanna strike some edge between the snow and the river, and that gives it a nice little bank there. Okay, and with that same shadow color, I can come in here and show some texture in the snow and show some of these divots and all that. Okay, a little bit more bank right here. Okay, so without cleaning, I'm taking again more raw umber and phthalo blue. No titanium white this time. This is a darker shadow color. And in between some of these banks and little glacier things, I'm going to put in some of these shadows and separators like this and start to build some more texture on this. Okay, with that dark value, just showing again some more river that's running off the canvas. So now I'm going to go back into some white and again that black that I made to give that blue hue to it. And so I'm going to dance. This is my number two flat brush in here. I'm going to dance this around and this is going to start to build some of the texture on the side of the snow bank like this. And this really gives the indication of some ice crystals in detail. So see, I'll hash in some of those things down there. And I'll also put in some more shadow right here as well. Okay, so taking some of that shadow color just here and there and working that into the snow a bit. And again, this builds texture and little divots and shadows and all that. Okay, let's take some white now. And again, my number four flat brush and just a hint of this blue hue color now. And on top of the river, I'm going to hit it with just some striking highlights and I'll start to build up some of the water details.
Okay, back to my script liner brush, going into that black again, pulling through to a point with lots of water. And just with the tip, I wanna strike in just some little weeds and grass areas. I'll tap it and I'll also pull it up to show more like grass indications. And again, anything you don't like, just take that light value, cover it over. And because it is a dark value, if that does happen, you may have to do a couple of coats to make it totally covered. So I would say maybe be a little careful on how much you put down but it's not a big deal. You can totally do it if need be. So as you can see like this, just randomly working that around and a little bit up in here, a little bit to show shadow and just wherever. Okay, so now back to my number four flat brush and I'm taking a little bit of phthalo blue and some raw umber to desaturate that down and some titanium white now. And I wanna take this little blue hue and add it just a little bit into the water to give more of this cold effect to it. Okay, and with that color left on my brush, I just kinda of wanna throw that on the snow just a little bit here and there, not much. And again, that shows some shadow and just some feel for the snow as it would be. Okay, so now back to my script liner. Again, lots of water and pulling through to a point through that black that I made. And on the water with the tip of the brush, I just wanna start striking in these little water details and just kinda how the river is stirring up a little bit. And I'll even add more pressure to my brush to get a fatter, thicker line. And that's gonna show just some indications of just how the water's moving. So I'm not gonna be really too concerned with how neat this is. This is kind of, in a way, it's going to be kind of messy, but that's okay because I'm going to come back over it with some other values that I put down already and knock some of that back and really just use this to build that up. Okay, so down in here as well, I'm going to give this sort of iceberg and ice sort of detail look to this bottom here. And again, I'm not worried about how neat because this is just more or less a blocking for some of this detail and even up on the berg like so. Okay, so now I have my number two flat brush. I'm taking that white and some of that blue hue and I'm going back over our river now. And so I'm gonna let some of this black, of course, play and I won't cover up all of it. And in other ways, I'll show more black showing than other areas. And so with these varieties, it's gonna show the current and just some more texture and details. Okay, going back into more of that shadow color again, a little bit more white into that. And let's put this Right here, this separates the icebergs from one another, so it looks like there's an upper one, and then there's this bottom one that you can kind of stand on if you wanted to. And now I'm gonna drag some of that shadow up into here just a little bit. Okay, going back again to that shadow, a little bit more white into that, a little bit more color. And with this, I'm gonna take and just scratch in just a few more lines and show some more of this bank detail. Okay, going back into some white now, into that shadow color so it's not as dark. And let's take this now, and again, this is my number two flat brush. It helps to get into smaller areas. And between the white snow here and this dark river color, this is gonna show some banks as well. Okay, after dancing some shadow around, I'm taking now some titanium white and just my number two flat, and I'm gonna strike in just some white water and show some rapid indications. Okay, now with my number four flat brush and just pure titanium white, 
I'm gonna go onto our snow now, and of course I'm not gonna cover up every part of the blue hue, but I do wanna take and put some pure white down and really cover up some of these areas and use it to really crisp out and define these water banks, or these ice banks, I should say, and uh, really fill those in very well. And this really makes it pop and contrast a little bit more. Okay, working that white around and now with the edge of the flat brush I'm just gonna hash these little things like this and this is really gonna give that indication of some more texture on the bank and even kind of show some icicle effect this way. Okay, very light shadow color here, and again, this builds some bank texture on this part right here. Okay, back to my script liner brush now with that phthalo blue and raw umber and again with lots of water on a script liner as I pull it through turning it to a nice crisp point point. and with this I'm gonna take and make this foreground tree here that's closer to us than all the other trees so as I start out here very little pressure and then a little bit more pressure to make that fatter as it comes closer to the tree like so okay now I'm gonna turn it up on its side and with this it's easier to do this and I'll just use the very tip and strike in these little branches
Okay, with my number four fan brush again with water on it so it splits them out and you have all these nice tips. I'm gonna do the same thing here and show this really nice foliage on this. Okay, so with my script liner brush now and lots of water with that black, I'm going to go ahead and sign. And I want to thank everyone so much for all your watch time and your support. Don't forget to subscribe for more video lessons I'll be putting out on a regular basis. And let me hear your questions and comments down below. And until next time, happy painting, everyone.